Hi again, this is Jason Dingus with Quiz Machinery. I want to talk to you guys today about automating your loading, unloading, and features around your CNC router to help your small shop produce quality and cost savings like a big shop. So Quiz Machinery is covers the Carolinas of Virginia for CR Ongs Route, and that's our CNC router partner. Three axis, four axis, five axis router solutions. Um, CR Onsroot makes their routers right here in North Carolina, just north of Charlotte by about 30, 45 minutes. And we've been working with them for over 20 years now. So a lot of our automation systems revolve around that. A lot of our customers associate us with CR Onsroot and that's where those projects begin. So that's what we're gonna use today. But understand that just because you're not using a CNC router doesn't mean automation can't help you. Reach out to us and we'll talk to you a little bit more about that and ways we can automate your saws, ways we can automate um, other parts of your shop, your material handling. So we're just going to use CNC routers today for this part purpose. So again, my name is Jason Dingus. I own Quiz Machinery. Uh, we started in 1956 uh, with Frank Quiz Sr. Uh, Frank Quiz Jr. bought it from him in 81. I bought it from Frank Quiz Jr in 2017 after working for him for a few years there. Prior to that, I ran my own furniture shop in Asheville, North Carolina, which is where we are right now today. So thanks for joining us. Let's get into it. Moving forward, uh, what we're going to talk about, a little bit of an overview here. We're going to start with moving gantry style machines and how you can automate those. We're going to start with a move, then we're going to move on to a moving table or what some people call fixed bridge style machine. And then we're going to talk about vacuum lifters and how those can help you load your machines. Some people call those vacuum lifts. There's also uh, pusher sweepers on how we offload the machine. We're going to talk about those. Then we'll move into automated in-feed, out-feed systems. So we've gone from partially automated or at least labor assisted with those vacuum lifts and the pusher sweepers to now we're automating it. And, um, and then we're going to go to a couple little features such as labeling and how you can have an off machine labeling system. Talk a little bit about that. So as I mentioned, we're going to start with gantry style machines. What we refer to as a gantry style machine, the table sits still, okay, and the gantry is going to move above it in those three axes, X, Y, and Z. All right. So automating a gantry style machine actually can be pretty convenient because the gantry can do a lot of that work for you. The gantry can go get the parts and drag them on. The gantry can push the parts off. It can also carry a sweeper and clean that surface as it's pushing those parts off. So automating a gantry style machine is actually relatively simple for a manufacturer such as CR Andrew. We're going to talk a little bit about what some of those features are going to be, the ways to do that. Before we go into full automation, let's talk a little bit about ways we can load and unload that machine with just assisting the labor. So we're going to talk a little bit about, let's talk a little bit about vacuum lifts. So when a vacuum lift, I can pick up the parts with a vacuum lift. You'll see pictures right here. And we can load the machine with the motorcycle handle type design that a vacuum lift has. Here we're showing a Schmaltz vacuum lift, which is a popular version brand that we sell right here at Quiz Machinery. And what that's going to do is the operator can be ready to go. And as soon as that table is cleared off, he can load that sheet, whether it got cleaned by the machine or whether it got um, whether it got cleaned by the offload person or whether he cleaned it himself. He can then go grab the sheet really quickly, load it. It's taking the, the weight away from his back and it's helping him work longer into the afternoons. We've seen this affect two big parts of labor. One is I get more production out of my, my labor in the afternoons because they're not tired. They haven't been lifting the big sheets all day. And two is they're protecting the machine a lot more. As they get tired, they're going to throw that machine, that sheet of plywood or melamine up on there. And that's going to eventually over time cause damage to the machine that we eliminate by using a vacuum lift and taking the weight off of there. So this is a gantry, getting back to the gantry style machine. Um, the the gantry is moved out of the way. We can load it with a robot also by putting that gantry in a park position so that the sheet can come down from the top. We've also done it where the robot can, in later after market type automation systems, you can have the robot drop it down and bring it underneath the bridge. But most of the time, if you know you're going to be adding robotics down the road, we like to stick that park position for the gantry out of the, um, out of the way and we bring the robot, the robot brings the sheet down from there. 
The other thing about gantry style machines is they can carry that sweeper, which is really, really nice. Talk about we're trying to get rid of all those air guns and trying to and stop cleaning the tables with the air guns. One, it's bad for your shop and your employees, but two, if you don't have a tool inside that spindle, you're just blowing dust up inside that spindle or inside to lose those tools, and that's going to be um, difficult to, uh, to, to keep that maintenance up. Whereas if we use a vacuum pusher sweeper, it's cleaning that table as it's pushing the parts off, um, and you get better results over time. So moving forward, we've got the gantry style machines. We can load it, we can assist our labor by doing it with a vacuum lift. We can completely take the labor out of there by using a robotic robotic um, loading and unloading. And then as far as the sorting of parts, the robot can even do that. We have a video from, 2000, from the 2016 IWF where a robot was actually sorting between parts and labor. You can see that here. And um, it's putting the parts nested onto a pallet and it's putting the waste where the waste goes. So again, moving from partial automation to full automation. Let's talk a little bit about fixed bridge moving table machines. So whereas the gantry machine, the gantry wheel is moving over a fixed table. Now the table is going to be moving underneath a fixed bridge. Usually right about now, most of my customers raise their hand if it's their first router and they say, hey, which one do you recommend for us? Which is better for our application, a fixed bridge moving gantry? My answer a lot of times is another question. I want to ask them more about what they're hoping to do. Why are we buying this CNC router at all anyway? Are we trying to save space? Are we trying to save people? Are we trying to automate this? Because a lot of those, the answers to a lot of those questions are going to help us whittle down to which one's the right fit for you. For example, maintenance wise, a fixed bridge machine does have some advantages maintenance wise. You don't have the rack and pinion, you have a ball screw, it's going to wear more evenly. Speed wise, sometimes we can get a little bit more speed because of that bridge because it's more fixed. But space wise, you're going to find a really big advantage with the moving gantry because that table sits still in a fixed spot and the gantry moves over top of it. Also automating, we can automate either model but there are some advantages in terms of motivate, automating the moving gantry because the gantry is doing so much of the work for you. So let's talk a little bit more now that we've covered fixed bridge and talk a little bit more about how we automate a fixed bridge machine. Again, same concept as far as vacuum lift and um, material handling options to ways to assist the labor that we have. Um, we can use a vacuum lift again. We can put a vacuum uh, a pusher sweeper, but in this case it's not pushing. It drops down and fixes in position so that when the table moves underneath it, it's pushing those parts off onto an outfeed table. So it works a little bit differently, but we can put that same sweeper on top of it to clean the surface. And we can use the same vacuum lift to both load and unload our parts if we need to. And when it comes to robotics, what we're going to usually do is put a, we're going to, still we're also going to put a part position. It's a little bit easier. We just extend where that table ends up. We can load it from the back, from the front. We can even push parts on and off from the side, as seen here in this side loading S series that CR Andrew um, built for a customer of ours right here in North Carolina. So I'd like to talk to you a little bit more about the fixed bridge stuff, but I think in the end, what it's going to boil down to is what matters to you. So I'd encourage you to put your questions in the chat right now, send those to us, and hopefully we can engage in a conversation where we can create a system that's going to work for you. Let's move on from here to some of the features that are going to help save time and organization in your shop. A really great feature that can come on the CNC routers is labeling. I get a lot of questions from customers. Um, one, question is, can I load the machine with a labeler? In other words, can I scan a part? Can, can an operator scan the label and it load the program that's going to need to run for that particular part, taking away some of that error that can occur with the operator? Absolutely yes. That's one way labels can help you. Another, another way labels can help you is by applying those labels before or after we're running the router's running so that it helps with your organization down the road, down the line. So let's talk a little bit about that. There's a couple different ways that can happen. 
One is we can label the parts as they come off the machine. We can put a printer at the end of the machine, have a conveyor outfeed so the parts that's a moving gantry machine. It pushes the parts off onto the conveyor. The conveyor brings the parts to the operator who has a labeler next to him. He's taking the label off the printer. He's applying it to the parts one at a time. This is a very simple way to do this and it can work in a lot of different scenarios even aftermarket. The next step up from there in terms of automation where a lot of people have gone in the last year or two is pre-labeling. So we can do this by hand. Obviously with software you can have an operator label them parts by hand or you can purchase a separate, it's, it is a CNC, but instead of cutting sheets it's going to be labeling sheets and it's going to label them before it um, before the sheet goes into the router. We can do it away from the router entirely. So one label station could operate multiple, could feed, if you will, multiple routers. That can be done later. That can even be done with a competitive router. We can build a separate label station for that. Or in a lot of cases, it's going to label it. If you can see in this picture right here, an automated M series with the labeler set in front of it. It's going to label the parts, um, label the sheets, then it's going to push that, then the machine's going to go get that sheet, drag it on, set it to the side, justify it to the, to the zero. It's going to cut the parts out, then it's going to push those parts out from there. And the robot can even see those labels and know which part and where to put them. So that's full automation. Um, pretty cool systems there. So again, what we really need to do is ask you the questions. Which one of these systems is right for you? It's going to depend a lot on your answers to those. Thanks for listening as we talked a little bit about automating your panel processing in your shop around your CNC router. Again, don't limit your thoughts to just your CNC router. We can automate a lot of your shop in other ways, from your finishing to your material handling to how you get your, your bunks of plywood in. Now we're going to move into the Q&A section. Hopefully you've put some questions in there already. If you haven't, go ahead and do them. I'm going to ask Allie, our CEO, about it, and she's going to uh, let me know what you guys need to know. All right. Sorry about that little miss hit there. I'm um, still learning all this, but thank you guys for attending. Uh, let's get to a couple of questions I get pretty often. Um, I did talk about labelers. I did not talk about inkjet. Um, CR Onger does have an on the spindle plate inkjet printer. You can print with the machine. In other words, a lot of my customers using plywood have gotten excited about that because of assembly instructions or in the building industry, it's been popular. For assembly as well um, the modular world they're getting excited about that part too and then um just a to a b to b maybe it's um this side up uh different types of things there and then as far as automation another thing i wanted to talk about was something kind of new that barbaric one of our partners through ema shelling group is offering on gantry style machines where you can get really really creative it's brand new um in terms of the expansion it's not new of course, we have that. We've had it and reach out to us and I'd love to talk to you a little bit more about it. But basically the ability to use a moving gantry and have multiple stacks of materials so that the machine, the same two or three on the same gantry system, we can have the same two or three lifts that are grabbing multiple types of sheets and loading the machine. So I don't have to have it rainbow stacked. And I can also load the parts to one spot and the waste to another spot. And it's a nice, compact, small footprint. And I can get you some information on that. Just reach out to us about that. Um, another thing I wanted to talk about briefly is, is just your relationship with your dealer and your relationship with your router manufacturer. Whoever you're going with, make sure it's somebody who asks a lot of questions. Um, that's how this automation is going to pay for itself. Um, when we talk about labor, what we talk about at Quiz Machinery is about reallocation of your labor. Um, there's no more uh, talk of eliminating people. Um, it's, elim it's, it's eliminating waste. So we have... Um, 10 people today, we need them to work like the 20 people that we need. We have 20 people working for us today, we need them to work like the 30 people we need. And that's something that Quiz Machinery specializes in, is, is helping you to determine where the real value is for that and um, where your real bang for your buck. So you're not investing a million dollars in your automation system right out of the jump. You're starting, you're we're reverse engineering it. So, okay, what's our very next step? Where's our very, where can, how can we pay for this next step? And then that pays for the next step and that pays for the next step. Um, a really good friend of mine owned a molding company and he did that. He's each job paid for another uh, small molder. And that 
um, those until he ended up with six individual Williams and Hussey molders. And that was, um, and now he's got a big molder and uh, he just worked through it and scaled into it. And that's what we can help you do. Thank you so much for your time. Really appreciate it. Check out our website, quizmachinery.com and um, come take a look at our showroom in Travel, North Carolina with CR Andre.